Well, it's been an extremely long time since I've done a Blu-ray news video. I did kind of stop doing them because Blu-ray news ends up being so sporadic. It's like you can never anticipate when things are going to drop and it's so hard to kind of collect a bunch of stuff before it gets kind of outdated in terms of me coming on here and kind of reporting on it and stuff like that. It became really difficult. Really difficult to keep up with all these different things dropping at all these random points in time. But goddamn, this week has been a freaking major goddamn slam across the board for 4K titles and all these different things. It's like, I just want to comment on these different things. And it's like, it's all completely in my wheelhouse. All this stuff that got announced for 4K UHD coming up in like September here. Now, the first main one is from Scream Factory is the fact that the first five Halloween films are all coming up on 4K Ultra HD Blu-rays on September 28th. Now, all these apparently have been remastered from 4K stands from the original camera negatives, with the first three films all being supervised by the director of photography, Dean Cundy. Going back and doing all the color grading and the HDR passes, stuff like that. And all five films will be getting new Dolby Atmos soundtracks. Things, same things they've been doing for the 4Ks they did for like Prince of Darkness and They Live and all the stuff they're really building up in this regard towards that format. Now a lot of this stuff is all going to be packaged with a lot, pretty much all the same features that you had from all the previous single disc releases from the old box set. So you're not going to get any of the additional stuff you got from like the deluxe version that I have that has the full boat of stuff going on there, but all the regular commentary tracks, the featurettes, the trailers, all these little things are all being poured over. And the 1080p Blu-rays being bundled in with these will all have the remastered 4K versions with the Dolby Atmos soundtracks. Now the interesting thing with the first Halloween film from John Carpenter is that it'll be a three disc set. You'll have the UHD, then you'll have the remastered Blu-ray with a bunch of features and commentaries, then they'll have a third desk where it says original color timing presentation. So I don't know exactly which transfer they're talking about. Are they talking about the very, very first Blu-ray where people had a lot of problems with how bright it was and some of the color timing? Or is it the one from the 35th anniversary set? Have no clue. Probably most people aren't going to really care because probably people have already wanted Halloween. Probably already had previous releases of it. And most likely you're mainly going to go for the 4K one as long as they deliver on it being exceptionally good quality. Now they have said in their official release for this whole thing, there may be additional bonus features announced at a later time. What that is, I have no idea. I know for Halloween 4 there is a older commentary track from the previous early DVD release like 2001 or whatnot from Alan B. McElroy, the screenwriter, and one other person that never made it to the Blu-ray sets. Maybe they'll clear that license and put it on there, I have no idea. But now that I've recently found out that that's the case, I'm if they don't put it on there, I'd like to be able to have that as completionist sake. Hopefully, someone's thinking about that and they're trying to clear license for that from Anchor Bay or Lionsgate, whoever the hell has those rights from back when, whatever the case. Who knows? But of course, these a lot of people are having problems with the new artwork. A lot of people don't like the new artwork, artwork they put together for the slip covers and the main cover art and whatnot. But apparently, the original theatrical posters will be on the reversible sides, where the disc I had for bought for Prince of Darkness that they live is just the original theatrical poster art. There's nothing on the reverse side. This one will have reversible artwork to you if you are very much offended by the the quality of these new pieces of artwork. You can get rid of your slipcase, reverse the thing, and have a nice day about that. So this this is like I I at least want to want to get like Halloween four and five and probably the original film. I do have the steel book of Halloween three. If anyone saw my comparison video from last year comparing the one the transfer from, from the box set and what was said to be a four K remaster from the original camera negative they put out in twenty eighteen on the steel book, but on the press release they're saying it's a new 2021 scan of the original camera negative 4K for Halloween 3 and Halloween 2, which they already did that three years ago, so did they rescan it again? 
and, or is it just the fact that they're using the same scans but they're going back in there with Dean Cundy and doing what he feels is his proper color timing for the here and now? I have no idea. Just got to wait and see. Have to wait and see. But I'm at least interested in the first film, four and five. We'll see how the what happens with three. But I, since I just bought like the, the the steel book last year, I don't know if I'm ready to swing up to that thing. But it depends on how big of a difference there is in the color grading and the quality of the whole thing. No idea until it drops when we start getting some word of mouth buzzing around here. But maybe Halloween too. Maybe if I get it eventually on a lower price. A lot of people are much bigger fans of it than I am. But it's a very exciting type of thing. So people are kind of wondering, like, why just the first five films? Well, everything from S Halloween 6, H2O, Resurrection, the Rob Zombie ones, are all under the Miramax banner. They're all owned by Miramax, which Paramount currently has a 49% interest in the company that owns Miramax. And they've been handling all this stuff. They're doing the 4K remaster on Scream, which is coming up in October, which... Goddamn finally. No idea if they're going to do the unrated director's cut, but at least they're rematching the goddamn thing after all these years after I did the retro video series debut episode on it. Somebody was paying attention. But at least on that regard, Paramount is handling that. So it's all under the Miramax banner. So they had a license, they would have the license from other another company or whatnot. Because apparently, either Halloween 2 and Halloween 3 under Universal, which they've constantly just had a deal with in place with them and continue to renew it. And apparently the first Halloween and 4 and 5 are all kind of reverted back to the original company, Trancast International Pictures. So Screen Factory probably made a deal with them. So if they want to do the later ones, they have to kind of deal with Miramax and maybe Paramount and work out a deal there. So that's probably something on. And of course, they're releasing this just ahead of when the new Halloween film is going to hit this October. And then there's going to be another one and the, the following sequel will come out the following October. So they might be splitting this up as almost kind of like a promotional type of capitalization or whatnot on the new sequel coming out. Who knows what's going to happen. But that's the word on that. New 4K scans from the original camera negatives. First three films. Color grading and HDR passes being supervised by Dean Cundy and approved by him. And all new Dolby Atmos tracks and all the 1080p Blu-rays will have the exact same remaster with the new audio tracks. Now getting up on more John Carpenter stuff, Universal has announced, finally, after lots of rumors and all this stuff coming out, John Carpenter's The Thing will hit Ultra HD 4K Blu-ray on, I believe it's September 7th. Now why this didn't end up going to Screen Factory or renewing that type of thing where they've done all these releases from before. But uh, apparently they've got a brand new DTS-X audio track on this thing and of course the 4K thing. They didn't really give us many details about the actual remaster re restoration process on this whole thing. One would think it's the same thing from the Arrow 4K original camera negative scan that was done a few years back that Screen Factory kind of recycled into their Steelbook release of the film. But nothing's really been made noted and the 1080p Blu-ray on this is the same one from like back in 2008. The oldest transfer they have all this type of stuff is an old, old repressing. So if you're looking to get it, you're going to have to do region free type of stuff with the Arrow release or track down the, on the second hand market the Steelbook release from Scream Factory, which I don't have and is very pricey to get hold of. So there's that and that type of thing. But at least it's finally come to 4K after a lot of things and getting other Carpenter films going on. So Still waiting on a couple other things with Carpenter stuff. See, we're going to drop with like Escape from New York and The Fog and a few other things. Don't know if Big Trouble Little China will be getting that kind of treatment through Fox and Disney or whatnot, but hopefully things will kind of start shaking out with the Carpenter stuff because it's been going on. It always goes over well. It always gets good sales, good reactions of people. No reason it can't be a good seller. But uh, some people might be like, ah, well, they don't, they're not including like the original, the real, original audio track stuff like that with the 4k thing people are probably gonna be a little hesitant they're gonna be like excited but it's like uh I, you, you kind of sniff around like there's got to be like an ultimate collector's edition thing going to come down to the road eventually lord knows they might renew with the screen factory at some point in time and do a much bigger wider thing and put all the shit in there all the audio tracks wonderful stuff still don't know because apparently the kurt, kurt russell john carpenter commentary has been 
an edited version ever since the original Blu-ray release. They kind of went in there and did a few things, kind of cut a few little things out they felt like was maybe not in the most contemporary sensibilities of how they're discussing things. I don't know, but that makes me want to go back and try to get the old DVD version that has the proper thing or the old Laserdisc version, the Signature Collection Laserdisc, to get the original unedited version, which I'm sure they're probably not bothering to uh, restore for this version because they haven't really been too detailed about the press release. But, moving on to other things, another passion of mine is Star Trek. And this was rumored for a long time, and a few of the rumblings going on and whatnot, where they're going to do 4K releases of the first four Star Trek films. Now, in the same case of Halloween, why it's just the first four, why isn't Star Trek V and Star Trek VI, where the original cast also included with this thing, we can get into that. But at least they're going to be releasing that, remastered 4K for the first four films, the motion picture, Wrath of Khan, Search for Spock, and the Voyage Home. And the Voyage Home is actually getting on August 19th and 22nd a Fathom Events theatrical release. Might go see that. I was worried when I first saw this, like, is this going to be the, the digital noise reduction disaster I've been living with? No, they, this is clearly going to be the 4K version and fabulous, fabulous quality there and everything like that. So, looking forward to that. Apparently, with the motion picture, they're also including a Dolby 2.0 isolated music track where I already have the La La Land record soundtrack of it. It's a phenomenal Jerry Goldsmith score. But it's nice that they kind of including that as an isolated score track. And brand new Dolby 7.1 True HD soundtracks for all four films. Now again, there's no original audio tracks on this. There's no like original mono or stereo tracks or whatnot that people kind of crave being purists and cinephiles and whatnot because sometimes remixes don't always go in the best regard so sometimes you want to have that original audio mix to preserve the way you've always heard the film but a lot of the stuff is kind of all the bonus features are really just kind of recycled from the old blu-rays but at least they're finally because they did wrath of khan 4k remaster five years ago for the 50th anniversary but they never actually put out the uk the 4k uhd disc so they remastered the theatrical, the director's cut, and they're putting that out as well on this disc. And they are at least doing separate standalone releases for just the regular Blu-rays, which will all be remastered. So everything's remastered. They're going to have a box set with both the 4K and the standard 1080p discs all remastered in there. And then you can also buy individually some pretty nice, almost retro artwork on the Blu-rays that have all the remastered stuff on it. So... I'm kind of interested. I, I'd, I'd at least get Search for Spock and Voyage Home. Because I already have Wrath of Khan on 1080p and that 4K remaster. And the fact of the matter is that the motion picture is going to be the theatrical cut. Because they just announced that they will begin restoration on Robert Wise's director's edition of the motion picture, which will take about six to eight months to complete. Now, this will end up being premiered exclusively on Paramount Plus. Hopefully, eventually, they will put out a full, proper physical media release on a big box set, and hopefully they'll have, eventually by then, Final Frontier and The Undiscovered Country. Now, rumors are going around, people are thinking stuff like, okay, one, this is the 55th anniversary, so you want to release something big, release what you have, ready. So you don't want to delay it. It's like, okay, it's going to take an extra amount of time to get five and six done, and it's going to miss the sort of anniversary date of the premiere of Star Trek back in like 1967 or whatnot. 66, sorry. So they're releasing the first four films because that's what they have ready for their anniversary. Now, Star Trek V, obviously there's been always the kind of things like it had some things that Shatner kind of wanted to have like a director's cut version of it. I don't know if that's really going to happen here. I think it's maybe just a scheduling setback and not having the 4K versions ready for that. 6 is a little bit more complicated because there are alternate versions because the original theatrical version is just that. And it's framed 2.35 to 1 off the super 35 millimeter film negative. Now when Nicholas Meyer, the director of the film, went back and did a sort of extended version of the entire film, he opened up 
the entire frame of the film to more, probably closer to like 2.00 to 1. So if you wanted to preserve those different aspect ratios, that creates a little bit of a different thing where you can't do a seamless branching. You have to kind of put one on one disc and one on the other disc to maintain you have maximum bitrate quality, all that type of stuff. And there was a slight bit of difference when you had the theatrical cut, then they had a special home video version that he later refined that for the later on special collector's edition DVD version, which people would say is the director's cut. So that's a very interesting type of thing. It's like, we don't have those details yet. And of course, we'll see if they end up doing next generation films, stuff like that. The Kelvin timeline films, the J.J. Abrams stuff, it's already got their 4K stuff out there. Perfectly fine. But we'll see how things kind of go in the next foreseeable future on that regard, how that stuff pans out. Now that's all coming out again September 7th, same time as John Carpenter the Thing from Universal Pictures. Paramount is handling all this stuff in-house. Hopefully they're doing a great job. If they've done as great of a job as they did with stuff I've seen from like Top Gun and they, the Top Gun remaster looks phenomenal. And they've done great work with remastering like Mission Impossible and a bunch of other films and of course all the work that was done on the Next Generation Blu-ray sets. It should be in good hands to make sure that it comes out really phenomenal. So looking forward to it. I... At least the standalone uh, Blu-rays are being priced pretty reasonably around $15 or short of that. So it's a pretty reasonable price. So they're baking more on the U UHD sales on that whole thing with the big box set and the with the digital codes and stuff like that along with that. So I'm looking forward to it. I really want to see these things remastered because, again, the old Blu-rays are slathered with digital noise reduction. They look really bad. Search for Spock probably looks the worst because it's such a very overly bright film that all the detail just gets smudged out and it's so obvious how it's all done. When you look at that 4K remaster they did for Wrath of Khan, it looks very filmic and very, very appropriate for what I think the film was supposed to look like. So, really, really looking forward to it. Hopefully they have color timed the motion picture back to that more warmer sensibility that Richard H. Klein had, had fashioned for the entire film that got turned to a much more cooler aesthetic for like the Blu-rays and a few other releases here and there, so hopefully they're maintaining that, especially with David C. Fine, the guy who gave me a little bit of extra information on the uh, the retro video series episode and the Terminator home video retrospective. Gave me that little bit of extra information about the history of some of the releases and Harlan Ellison's credit on the Terminator. He's the guy heading this up. So I had a little link there. I was really pleased that he reached out for me on that and so pleased that he's still involved with this 20 years on from when they did it with Robert Wise for the original DVD release. So ecstatic to see that. I treated him out a little bit. It's like congratulations to him that he finally gets to go back and do a 4K restoration on Robert Wise's proper version of the film. Can't be looking forward to it anymore because a lot of people don't have as much love for motion pictures as I do. But after I did my review of it a couple years ago, it really invigorated a lot of stuff in me just with... Weiss's version, because I don't really like the theatrical version. It loses a lot of little nuances, little details here and there that I feel just kind of sap something out of it. The little details that Robert Weiss wanted in the film really make something very special in my view. So, regardless of that, guys, I had to talk about this stuff, because, like, I got I got to be broke in September. So much shit to buy! Because if I wait too long, then I, the price is going to go up. Because, like, in the first couple of weeks... I'll have kind of a little bit of a discounted price, a kind of sale price for the initial release. Then it's going to go back up. So it's like, God damn, I'm going to be broke. <laughs> We're all going to be broke. Come Halloween, we ain't going to have no money. We're just going to be sitting at home watching 4K shit and just chewing on candy and just having no money whatsoever. So, and, and living long and prosper. So, wonderful stuff. All that 4K stuff. I know there's a lot of other stuff, I think. I saw that the... Uh, Phantasm Sphere set is being re-released from Rogo USA, the, the same thing they had before. I wish they just did it like a slim down thing without the kind of Sphere collectible thing, because like, that's jacking the price up a lot. Because I know Arrow UK has a much slim down version, it's probably like $40, $50. I'd buy that in a second if it was region A compatible, which it's not, and these guys over here don't want to just get rid of the, col the the collectible sphere and just give us a regular, just standard box set of the things. I'd grab that in a goddamn heartbeat. So, because it's like a hundred dollars or something like that, it's like eh, it's a little much for four films. The fifth film, I don't even have any interest for, because it looks like shit. But regards to that, guys, if you want to know why 
the the Phantasm film franchise that I did like eons ago. Never got a installment for Ravager. I I just watched trailers of that thing and I felt like I couldn't fucking sit through that thing. So in regards to that, guys, thank you so much. It's been a long time coming, but I just had to just sit down and just talk about this stuff because I just all these Halloween films, I think they're going to look absolutely phenomenal. Four and five really needed, uh, needed an upgrade to a certain degree. I think they can look really exceptional now with a new scan and new color timing. Just refresh color timing in terms of that. No one else involved with the film is really kind of overseeing four and five. The director, not the DP, stuff like that. So they're just probably going off of whatever they have available and doing their best estimate of what the film's going to look like. But hopefully... There's no color timing issues or any kind of weird shit. Hopefully there's no, there's, there, hopefully there's no replacement plans. Let's hopefully let's hope Screen Factory gets it all right. We don't have to fumble around with, with shit like we did with the Friday the 13th box set or other shit in the past. So hopefully that all turns out well. But that's enough for me, guys. Hopefully you've really enjoyed me running around with this Blu-ray stuff. And maybe when there's other... Something this big hit, and maybe eventually because... There's got to be an Elm Street box set coming down the line from Screen Factory eventually. Probably not this year, probably sometime next year. We'll see what happens, but if that ever drops, that news ever drops, I'll be right back here talking every fuck of detail I can get my hands on. So guys, tell me what you're excited for, what's going up on the pre-orders, stuff like that. What, what is just a little too much for you to afford right now. But let me know, guys. Wonderful stuff coming up. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye-bye.